Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the South Florida Tribune podcast. My name is Scott Morganroth, and I am pleased to be joined by Gary Cornblue. Gary Cornblue works in the health insurance industry, and tonight's broadcast is going to be called No Surprise Zach. But before I introduce Gary, I do want to let everybody know that these broadcasts are simulcast, so they can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find them on our YouTube channel. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel, South Florida Tribune, and then you'll be able to see them as well. And if you can't find them there, no problem. Go to www.southfloridatribune.com, and then you'll be able to go ahead and locate them through the website. Gary does a fine job in the health insurance industry. He's been around for 32 years. So this guy, there's no shortage of experience. So if you're looking for excellent expertise and knowledge, then you've definitely come to the right place. With that said, Gary, welcome back to the broadcast. Hey, thanks for having me back, Scott. Um, looking very, forward. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. I can assure you folks that when you listen to our shows, you, I would advise you to take a pen or p- pencil and a paper and take some notes because you will definitely learn a lot. Even though some of these subjects may be Florida-based, there are some concepts that can definitely be considered universal a little bit to some extent. We'll get into compliance things, but knowledge is power, and, and there are a lot of terms that are interchangeable. With that said, I want to reiterate that this show is being titled No Surprises Zach. So let's get started, Gary. And first question is, if I miss my premium payment and policy terminates, do I have any recourse? Okay, so if you miss your premium payment, um, you and your policy lapses, you do have recourse, although you have to act very quickly. The first thing you would do is call your insurance company and, and ask, you know, tell them, tell them, ask them to check your payment history and to see if they can potentially reinstate your policy. So based on the number of premiums that you've missed, in other words, you have to pay all back premiums. So let's say you missed two month, monthly premiums. You would have to pay those two month, monthly premiums, and then they would reinstate your policy like it had never lapsed. That's sometimes you can do that. Um, and then if that, if that doesn't work and you really feel that you have a legitimate reason uh, why you're, you know, why your policy lapsed. Now, Lapsing for non-payment is a very difficult one to to fight with the insurance company. Um, but in some cases with the marketplace, uh, you may have recourse. You may be able to request reinstatement through the marketplace too. And um, they can actually escalate your billing issue. So that if, if, if you've taken your policy out through the marketplace, the marketplace may be instrumental in helping you. And then you even have an appeal process through the marketplace if for whatever reason the, the decision doesn't go your way. Um, so you, you definitely have, have recourse. Now, um, as Scott said, this is uh, really the main focus of this podcast is uh, about the new No Surprises Act. But then also, you know, we'll just go into some health insurance 101, just some basic health insurance terminology. But uh, I guess the last thing I'll say about that first question, if you miss your payment. Um, also, just to mention, if, it, if the billing issue falls under that No Surprises Act, of course, you would have recourse through this, through this new law. Okay. So what you're telling folks is they would just call the help desk. Is that correct? Correct. Exactly right, Scott. They would, there's been a new help desk that was set up and designed specifically to take uh, these types of calls. Absolutely. Very good. Okay. So if I go to the hospital and I am visited by a physician that is out of my network, can I get billed? Well, great question. That's the, that is the crux of the, of the whole, uh, 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 no surprises act. And the reason why, you know, uh, the government passed this, this law, this was passed by CMS, which is a government cms.gov. That's the Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services. So this is, um, I, be, I believe this is a nationwide law because it's, it's uh, through CMS. So if you go to a hospital, and as Scott said, if his question was if I went to a hospital 
and I'm visited by a physician that's out of my network, can I be billed? Well, that used to be the case. You'd get a bill and you would get harassed until you either paid the bill, maybe they sent you to collections. Um, under the new No Surprises Act, your treating physician or hospital must always use and refer doctors to you that are in your network. Otherwise, they may be responsible. Um, uh, they may be held responsible for the for the charges. Because again, you've got re recourse through the No Surprises Act uh, help desk, and they would be your advocate to help you uh, dispute those those charges. Um, so yeah, if, if you're visited by, you know, Scott's question was regarding a hospital, but let's say, you know, it's just the doctor or let's say, you know, your primary doctor refers you to a specialist that's not in the network. Again, uh, these doctors must make sure that they refer their patients to in network, uh, providers. Okay. Well, also, can I get a plan with lower maximum amount of pocket limit? Because 8,700 seems very high. You know, 8,700, Scott, is the, that is the standard in, in the marketplace right now. That seems to be the most common maximum amount of pocket uh, limit. And just to say maximum amount of pocket is just what it sounds like. It's, I mean, God forbid you were in the hospital with an extended visit. And let's say you had a $200,000 doctor visit, that's the maximum you would pay out of your pocket, $8,700. Uh, because once you hit that number, the plan picks up 100%. Can you get a lower maximum out of pocket? Yes, but you would have to buy that down. You might have to go with, a instead of a, um, a bronze or a silver plan, maybe you'd have to go for a gold plan or a platinum plan. Uh, but as you buy down these benefits, they become you know, increasingly more expensive. So, um, and let me say this, that the people that qualify for the largest tax credits, they typically get the lowest maximum amount of pocket expenses because they're the folks that really need it the most, right? Um, you know, this 8,700 is, is very common, but these folks are still getting credits and many are not, many make too much Many have income that's too high, so they automatically get that 8700 But again, if you do qualify for uh, premium tax credits, um, and even even better, better than that, if you qualify for the silver plans, you actually get additional cost share reductions in addition to the tax credit, which means lower deductibles, lower uh, co-payments and lower maximum out of pocket expenses. So yes, the answer, the short answer is yes, you can buy down uh, and, and pay more to get a lower maximum out of pocket. If your income dictates, you could have a very low maximum out of pocket. It all depends on where your income level is. It's based on your annual household income. Uh, that's what ultimately determines the tax credit which determines your monthly cost for insurance and whether or not you qualify for the silver plans. Okay. So what if I need to go to a doctor that is not my plans network? Can I still get covered? Well, uh, if you have a PPO, the answer, the short answer is yes, you can still get covered. Uh, if you go to a doctor that's not in your plans network, if you have a PPO, because PPOs, offer out of network coverage. Now, having said that, um, the doctor would have to accept payments from your plan. Okay. And, and, and in that case, you would be able to go to a doctor that's not in your plan. Um, most doctors, of course, you know, will accept, will accept payments, especially if it's coming from a big company like Blue Cross Blue Shield or United Healthcare. Um, but as far as an HMO, the only way an HMO is going to cover you out of your network or out of your regional area even, because remember, PPOs give you in-network coverage and they give you access to a national network, whereas HMOs are more of a regional plan. They cover you in your regional area. Now, you are covered uh, based on a medical emergency. If you do have an HMO, if you happen to have an HMO, 
and you have a medical emergency and you're, and you're out of state, let's say, that is one way that you would be covered by an out-of-network provider because in an emergency situation, there is no in or out-of-network. The carrier expects you to get right to a medical facility, right to a hospital, and, and receive treatment, and you would be covered just as if you were you know, in your, in your backyard, okay? That sounds fair to me. Okay, so what if my doctor or hospital leaves my network mid-year? You know, that's such a relevant question, Scott, because I get that question from my, from my customers all the time. Unfortunately, there's not much we can do because doctors, you know, it's, it almost seems a little unfair. I think that's something that the industry maybe needs to work on because if you think about it, whether you're purchasing a health insurance policy and you're under 65, you're purchasing it through the marketplace or you're purchasing a Medicare plan because you're, you qualify for Medicare or you're over 65 and you're do and you and you pick let's say you pick that plan just specifically because your doctor was was in that network doctors are not held to the same standards they can come in and out of these networks i think they should be held to the same standards as us and only be able to come go leave a network you know during that annual enrollment period so again they're just not held to the same standards oftentimes you know my my client chooses a plan and only to find out that the doctor that show that was in network again decided to leave the network. So unfortunately, no, there's really not a whole lot you can do. Uh, I would say if you have a PPO, uh, then then the, then you may still be able to see that doctor and get some get some get coverage. Um, but for the most part, there's not much we can do. Like I said, maybe the industry will change. And we'll all be on the same page. Doctors can, you know, can only enter the enter into these networks or leave the networks when the patients can select the plan for, you know, you, you follow what I'm saying? In other words, yeah. the doctors and the medical professionals should be held to the same standard um, so that when a client chooses a plan, he knows that doctor or that hospital will be in that plan for that for that full plan year. Well, so let's talk about the peace of mind aspect, okay, and elaborate. So you're saying they should be able to exit the plan during the annual enrollment period. Well, let's just talk about peace of mind when it comes to something like this. What, what do you think the patient's most likely going to try to do? Um, well, uh, in what situation? In well, you're talking about doctors leaving the networks. Is right. That oh, what's right. a patient going to do? Well, yeah. Like I said, if you have a PPO, you may still be able to see that that doctor or that or that specialist. Because remember, PPO has, PPOs have that out of network coverage. But other than that, Scott, I mean, if you have an HMO, I mean, the only thing you can do is talk to the doctor and ask them, you know, to 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 get to try to get uh, get back into the network. If enough patients ask them. You know, a doctor can submit documentation. They have to submit a CV um, uh, to the carrier and, and maybe get back into the network. So, yeah, the patients can urge their doctors to, to join the networks. Sometimes that's effective if enough patients ask. But for the most part, you pretty much have to wait until that next annual enrollment period and, 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 select, and select that plan. Again, I just hope in the future doctors and providers are held to the same standards as us so that when we know when we apply for a plan we know that doctor is going to be in that plan for the whole year right right now i'm going to use and the directories reflect that data yeah I, i'm going to use yeah i'm, I'm going to do something i rarely ever do on these shows but this is very interesting concept so i want to take it to a certain level okay so bear with me on this it's like a college student <laughs> choosing a university to be paired up with a coach and all of a sudden the coach leaves, uh, which is why now they've created a transfer portal. So oh. I'm trying to relate it in a very different way where, you know, there are ways that you'll have to try to find a way to make the most of what it is. And I know that the, the biggest thing with any patient is you want to make sure your doctor is in there because I don't know about you, but I don't like changing doctors any more than I have to. 
Uh, but, you know, if it means, well, in fact, I'll even take it a step further, okay? I actually had to see, get a new neurologist because he's not in my existing plan. And I like the guy because I've unfortunately suffered some concussion issues. But the reality of the situation is, is, you know, there are enough quality doctors within my wife's medical insurance plan. And, you know, as much as you hate to give up on the peace of mind part of it, that's where you had the PPO comparison. But I know right. I've gone a couple different levels here, but I'm trying to make sure it's very relatable to different genres is what I'm trying to do. Definitely. So if a college student is recruited by a coach, you certainly hope that that coach is going to be there the entire time. Or if you have a doctor, but you're forced to leave them, uh, then you simply have to do it. So those are some interchangeable examples that I, would, I thought I would probably add to them. Do you see the comparisons between both situations i do i think that's a great an analogy and let me just say the peace of mind part let me let me say this people should have a pretty good peace of mind knowing that these are big companies and they have very extensive networks so just because your doctor or your specialist happened to leave your plan that doesn't mean you're without uh care I mean, these networks are so big especially the ppo networks that you're 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 bound to find another uh, replacement primary care doctor or specialist. These are very extensive networks, um, and I I would say the agent should be instrumental in helping their client do those searches, those very specific searches, and that's what I, to find the your doctors, to find your specialists, to find the hospitals that you're comfortable with, and that's exactly what I do for my clients. And yeah. Sure and yeah, go ahead. And I'll take it a step further. If the agent is competent enough, okay, and I say this very abruptly here, they should be looking on Google and the client and the agent should be able to compare and contrast. I think this is the right doctor for you. And, you know, let's take a look at the Google reviews because very few people uh, realize, Gary, how powerful Google is. Oh, yeah, you're, you're so right, Scott. I mean, everything is based on Google reviews. I mean, look, I mean, when we purchase anything from a from an automobile to to, uh, you know, to a, an exercise machine, I mean, what do we do? We go on and we, we look at the reviews, right? Right. It should be no different than a doctor, right? A dentist or 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 or, or a Medicare or a health insurance agent like myself. But but but, but it's funny that you mentioned that because. You know, when I do my searches every now and then, I find that very few doctors actually subscribe to to the Google theory. Uh, it, it's 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 really it's it's mind boggling to me how many, or I should say, how many few doctors really you know have 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 these reviews. Um, so, uh, but it is so important, Scott. And I don't care what business you're in, you know, Google reviews are huge. I mean. You know, it's you want to know what the masses have said about this person. And um, you can get a pretty good idea of who you're dealing with by reading those reviews. No question well, about well, not only that, a sharp agent should be able to walk a patient through to find him a competent doctor, even if that individual's doctor isn't in the network. Absolutely, Scott. I do it all the time. I, I sit there. I, I, I've got Google on one screen. I've got the search uh, function on the other stream. Yeah, absolutely. Your agent absolutely should be helping you. My clients don't call the customer service number. They call me first. Okay. And they call their customer service number on the back of their card second, because it, it's, it's frustrating to say the least to try to get through to some of these carriers, especially during this period, because Let's face it, the health insurance and the medical industry is is under a tremendous amount of, of pressure from, from COVID. Um, so, and I always answer my phone. I mean, it's on 24 seven. So my clients just call me, Gary, can you search this doctor? Can you search this specialist? Can you search this hospital? I'm happy to do so. And your agent should be too. Now I wanna backtrack on one thing that we talked about earlier, okay? And that's the, can I get a plan? And you alluded to the silver plan, okay? So I'm gonna take that question a step further for those individuals that wanna differentiate some things. You talk, I want you to go ahead and differentiate the gold, the platinum, and the silver plans. 
Well, there's actually four medals. There's bronze, right? Okay. Then silver, gold, platinum. So it depends on where your income falls, but based on your ho annual household income, you could fall in a range where not only do you qualify for the tax credit, but you fall in a range where you qualify to be in that silver category. And that's kind of the sweet spot if you can if you're in that category. It means that your income is, you know, is is maybe on a little bit on the low side, perhaps, um, where you need that extra help. And you really do get it because in, in addition to the tax credit, you get those extra savings. And you get the low in low deductibles, in some cases, zero deductible. You have very, very low co-payments. I've seen co-payments as low as zero. You know, in some cases, a dollar for a doctor visit or two dollars for a specialist visit. Um, so, yeah, so those silver plans can be can be very, very attractive if, if you fall in that category. Now, if, if that silver plan is still too expensive, which usually doesn't happen very often, you could always back into a bronze plan. And if you're if you're purely just looking to save the money or you that's, that's all you can afford. Sometimes a, a bronze plan, kind of a bare bones, you know, bronze plan could could be a little bit less expensive, but then you lose those cost share reductions. So you kind of want to you don't really you want to try to stay in that silver category if you qualify. Now, a lot of people that it's usually the folks that don't that that don't qualify for tax credits that go for the gold plans and the platinum plans. Because those are folks that are in the high income and they can afford those to buy. Remember I talked about buying down the maximum out of pocket? Well, that's how you do it. You step up in the metal. You go from a silver to a gold. Maybe, you're, maybe your maximum out of pocket drops from 80, 8,700, maybe down to 3,000, right? But you're paying for that. Just like in Korea, lowering the deductible on your car insurance. You can lower the deductible, but you're paying for that. You're paying a higher premium for that, right? And um, so there you have it. That's it. Four plans. Write them down. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. As I, I mentioned the, I'm sorry. I, I mentioned the gold, but I wanted to mention the platinum. And the platinum really is just... Well, one step above the gold, right? So you get slightly lower uh, maximum out of pocket. Maybe your three thousand becomes fifteen hundred or two thousand. And of course, as you go up in the metal plans too, um, your copayments typically drop as well. So, well, well, the reality is, is you have different levels, and everybody has to find out where their comfort zone is based on a lot of different factors. And if anybody's out there want to keep it very simple. Gold, platinum, silver, bronze. Take notes. You'll be able to go ahead and do that. And of course, if you don't want to take notes, and what you do is you simply Google out what they are, and then you'll be able to get clarity. So I'm glad that you were able to add a little bit of clarity, and we elaborated on that so that everybody gets all the information necessary. Definitely, and they can always call me too, Scott. Well, and I'd be happy to help. Right, and your number is displayed. So, folks, if you're watching <laughs> the show, feel free to go ahead. And look at his number. And I'm going to read it for you as well. Gary, so telephone number is 954-532-2060. Great number, 954-532-2060. So if you have any questions after this show is over with, don't hesitate to call him. And one last thing I want a piece of business we get to before we go back to station identification. Shouldn't I always look for the plan with the lowest deductible? You know, that's a funny question, Scott. Because... And it's very relevant because people often think that they need to shop to get the plan with the lowest deductible, that that's their best, that's the best plan. And it's really not. They, 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 the number you really need to focus on is the maximum out of pocket uh, limit for the plan, not the deductible because your deductible does not represent your maximum out of pocket expenses. It's your maximum out of pocket limit that determines your, what, what the maximum you'll, you'll pay out of your pocket. So now the deductible, sometimes, you know, if, if there's a deductible, let's say it's a thousand or 2000, it may apply to some services on that plan. Um, and then of course, just to get, just to, just to tell you, 
the deductible really is very closely related to coinsurance and maximum out of pocket. So remember, deductible, coinsurance, maximum out of pocket. And I'll just give you a quick example. So let's say somebody's got is going in for a pre-authorized surgery, let's say a gallbladder surgery, and they've got an HMO with a three thousand dollar deductible, right? Uh, forty percent coinsurance responsibility, and that eight thousand seven hundred maximum out of pocket. Okay, let's assume the total cost for that surgery is forty thousand dollars, right? So what's the member going to pay first? They're going to pay that deductible, right? Just like your auto insurance, you have to pay the collision deductible first before the policy pays. So that pa that patient would pay the three thousand because that's his deductible. He would then be responsible for forty percent of all charges. Once that $3,000 and that 40% coinsurance responsibility, once those two numbers reach that 8,700 maximum out of pocket, that, that patient's done for the rest of the year. That, that policy will pick up 100% uh, for the remainder of the policy year. Um, so again, it's not always the low deductible that you wanna look at. You wanna focus on the maximum out of pocket expenses that's going to represent the most you'll you'll take out of your pocket but i just wanted to go through that quick example just to kind of give you the um um just to just to because people t tend to get really confused with the deductible the coinsurance the maximum out of pocket and i think that example hopefully will will, will help you understand there are also some other acronyms to be familiar with aptc is one so if you're in a marketplace plan and you're getting a tax credit, it's the advanced premium tax credit. And the reason why it's called an advanced premium tax credit, it's, that's essentially what the government's doing. You're projecting how much you're going to make, your household income, what that will be during that plan year. And they're advancing you that, that premium tax credit based on that projection. Uh, once you file your taxes at the end of the year, I, as I always say, it all comes out in the wash because you'll get an IRS form 1095 showing your credits, and then your accountant will determine exactly what your actual income was, and he'll reconcile that premium tax credit. So if your projection was accurate, you'll you'll be flat at the end of the year. If if you you know if you said that you made fifty thousand, you actually made a hundred thousand. The government can actually recapture a portion or all of those advanced tax credits that they gave you. And a lot of people think, well, they took my money back when I when they took my money when I filed my taxes. You know, the, the government took my money, but they really didn't. They just recaptured the, 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 the advanced tax credit that they gave you because you didn't qualify for it. So keep that in mind too. Um, SEP is another acronym you'll want to be familiar. That's a special enrollment period, which many people do qualify for. So even if you're outside of the annual enrollment period, you may actually qualify for a special enrollment as well. So again, call, uh, talk to your agent, uh, call me. Uh, again, my name is Gary. I'm, I'm always available. 954-532-2060 is my office number. It forwards to my cell, so I never miss a call. Very good. Well, you know what, Gary did a really good job explaining a lot of interesting points. We hope everybody will have an opportunity to to not only listen to it again, but watch it if you have an opportunity to do it visually on our streaming service as well as YouTube and so forth. So with that said, we'll take time out for state station identification. The way you've, uh, these broadcasts are simulcast through Spreaker, Spotify, Apple, Google, iHeartRadio. Yes, the YouTube channel as well. And... You'll also be able to uh, listen to them wherever you get your podcasts. You can find them on www.southfloridatribune.com. You can also email us at southfloridatribune at gmail.com. And feel free to go ahead and follow us on Twitter at Tribune South. So Gary did a really good job talking about this. And I hope that everybody has an opportunity to benefit by what we've done tonight. This is the South Florida Tribune podcast. And of course, we are talking about the No Surprises Act. So Gary, we look forward to the next episode and anxious to see what you're going to be able to inform everybody. So on behalf of Gary Cornblue, my name is Scott Morganroth. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the South Florida Tribune podcast. Once again, the No Surprise Act. 
and we will catch you the next time. Good night, everybody. Good night. Take care, everyone. <laughs>